or action. Let's go. By the way, speaking of action, chat voted, and uh, it's even closer than the other two, as it should be. 52% of you say Hikaru Nakamura is the favorite heading into this match. Again, that's about as close as it can get to a 50-50 split. So uh, here we go. Hikaru, and Nakamura, Magnus Carlsen. <sighs> God, those words feel good. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> do. And what is this mainline stuff? Why are they playing a long theoretical variation where they barely spent any time and we're on move 21 and they're trading off all the pieces? Yeah, maybe a little bit of nerves. Maybe neither side wanted to play too risk it for the biscuit chess out of the gate. And uh, now Hikaru a little worried about his back rank. That makes sense. And this is seeing more pieces get traded. All, and also from a time perspective, they played so fast that neither player should really get in, in the kind of time pressure that leads to blunders. Although now things going a little bit white's direction. Hikaru accepts the rook ending. And interesting. He offered a trade, but Magnus yeah. doesn't want to trade because the white king is yeah. close to the center. This is actually instructive stuff. You don't say that often in Bullet, yeah. but instructive to know he didn't trade because the white king was more active. Yeah. Well, when two heavyweights meet, sometimes there's a lot of footwork before you see any real punches landed, and that game was an example of that. Just some footwork, both guys kind of being like, all right, I'm where I want to be in the grand final versus, you know, objectively maybe the best opponent I could be facing. I think they both feel that way, and uh, a draw starts things off. And now we get a Benoni structure uh, from Black's point of view, but the knight comes into d4, and Hikar quickly, what? Queen b6 met by knight f5, a sacrifice. Yeah, it's 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 a bit of a bluff according to the computer, but it doesn't matter because in Bullet, can you calculate everything? Hikaru laughs in the face of danger at the knight and takes e4, old hearted. But wow, there's no mate against this king. It feels so open. Yeah, Magnus's attack is raging on. Hikaru way down on the clock here, by the way. Yeah, good call. So what's happening here? Black has two minor pieces. No <laughs> Every piece is hanging. And apparently oh. that's no good because queen f6 at the end, I think. Oh, oh no. But f6. Oh, he finds f6. The queen is under under fire. Yeah. So now this queen's under attack and the rook in the corner. A white king is safer between the two, but black is up a full piece. Dude, these guys' ability to just stare down the barrel of of insanity is, is what separates them, right? I mean... I said cold-hearted. Really, it's cold-blooded. Hikaru's ability to navigate those tactics and and parry that those threats, Robert. Good try by Magnus, though. But this queen on c1 covers the g5 square, which is very important right there. The queen would have went up to g5 with a yeah. perpetual. Instead, the queen on c1 covers. The king escapes. Hikaru Nakamura should take this game. Yeah, he's finding a way to get surgical against that white king, but Magnus holding on. Is there a perpetual now? And Hikaru needs to be careful because if Magnus was yeah. queen c6 check, he can't pre-move. He would lose his queen. That's a draw by repetition. Yeah. Is it? Ah, Magnus. Ma Hikaru shakes his head. Couldn't find a way out of the checks. Magnus snatches a draw from the jaws of defeat there. And wow. Yeah, Hikaru's probably a bit unhappy about that. He was up major material. Uh, but Magnus, he's showing off the mouse speed now. He is improving. I think the more games he plays, the faster he gets in crunch time. Yeah, he's he's uh, keeping up the speed. That's been the one thing you wonder if he was going to be able to do. He did it with Danya, did it with Ali Reza. Will he maintain speed against Hikaru? This game, this game he's down five seconds. And Hikaru also looking... Pretty good. He just win the exchange for free. I think he did. That, uh, that's that's easy money. He's up a pawn right now, and he's pushing his pawns. And, oh. whew, this is a knight and bishop. As uh, this just doesn't look good for Black. But if anyone can weasel their way out, it, it feels like Magnus. He's good at these end games. E three and C four. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't an exchange. It was a pawn. I was hallucinating there. But ultimately, White is still just much better. Uh, and the fact that Hikaru was also up. What is that? Fourteen seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. Bit of a in fact, Magnus just resigns, and just like that, we have our first decisive game of the match: Hikaru Nakamura with a one-game lead. Yeah, Magnus says, "I cannot look at that position anymore. You outplayed me. Good work." And now it's back to the drawing board and the openings. I feel like we haven't seen anything of note thus far. They're, they're dabbling in different lines, but you know, sometimes we know we're going to get a Berlin match, or we're going to see one side yep. out prep the other. It's just a bunch yep. of jockeying right now. 
Agreed, but I will say the one thing we also haven't seen is sometimes Hikaru will play the, the I'll call them the dubious Hikaru specials, right? Where he'll play the B3 stuff or play the openings he knows objectively aren't great um, because he's so comfortable with them and he knows he can he can outplay people anyway. I don't think he's messing around with kind of dubious openings against Magnus, Robert. I think that's one thing we've seen. And Although That was a mistake from Matt. Apparently it was almost winning for him, and now suddenly Black is the side for choice. Black has the bishop pair and isn't losing material. Please take me, says Magnus. I want to hit both your rooks, and Hikaru says, absolutely not. How do you play chess like that with no time? I just... I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm speechless. And Magnus, for like the fifth time today, has sacrificed an exchange in a great way. Like, look at this position. He yep. has a bishop and two pawns for a rook. He also has the healthier king. His <laughs> connect yep. four, I win. Well, oh. I'll say the other thing he has is an edge on the clock for the first time. Although, right as we say that, he blunders. Oh, is there, is there some sort of mate? It's mate. G5 is coming and it's mate. Hey, Carl yes. has to sack. And then his pawn should go. Just push the F pawn. E5. Oh, but then there's... Yeah, he gets behind the pawn first, and then he chases it down. That was well played. Good technique. Five extra seconds on the clock for Magnus. Yeah, Hikaru takes one of the pawns, but it's not enough. Freddy's going to get frisky on the F-file, and uh, and Magnus <laughs> is going to level things up in this game unless something wild happens. He also has a huge edge on the clock, which I think was maybe the biggest turnaround of all, Robert, in this game. Magnus yes. was leading on the clock wire to wire. And did you see that? Magnus went king e3. He gave up his pawn, so it was objectively a bad move, but he's playing faster, and Hikaru expected the pawn to push, so he pre-moved his rook up, and that's why Magnus was able to steal that rook and the game. So it's 2-2, two to two, and that means we are level once more, just like at the start. And look, again, they're playing a quiet line, almost as if they're playing each other in a classical match. Yeah, agreed. This is high-level opening chess, <laughs> quiet lines, <laughs> and... Uh... You know, there's 40, now just under 40 minutes on the clock. So we got a lot of chess here. We've got 55,000 of you tuning in across all platforms. Don't go anywhere. The fun has just begun on this Friday. I don't know if we're going to get overtime chess, but we're going to get a an epic clash no matter what. Well, Hikaru is going to get a pawn up advantage because he just stole one of those double isolated pawns in the center. But White's pawn structure, not healthy, but who cares how healthy it is when you're up two of them? Yeah, a couple of doubled but past E-pawns feels good. Hikaru rebounding here from that loss he just had. If he can, if he, oh, and that, yeah. And by the way, again, look at the edge of the clock. This has been an interesting match so far, Robert. It feels like the decisive games, at least, I know we had a couple of draws. The decisive games have been very one-sided, right? Like one's, one player's not just winning on the board, they're dominating on the clock, and the other guy has to go back to the drawing board. Magnus just refines. Yeah, you're right. 100% right. And also, they're switching off who has the lead on the clock. In some earlier matches, one player always jets out to a huge time advantage, and then the other player catches up. Here, they're trading off victories, they're trading off time advantages, and they're also switching up their openings. I mean, Magnus, he did play this style in uh, the game that he won two ago, and Hikaru says, oh, if you're going to go for this again, I'm ready, and I'm stealing a pawn in the center. Yeah, agreed. By the way, that... That vote I had earlier, there were 5,000 votes from the YouTube chat, which mm. which was 52% Hikaru Nakamura. But then we have uh, several thousand from Twitch, and it's 58% Hikaru Nakamura. So interesting, both Twitch oh. and YouTube slightly favoring Hikaru in this match, and Hikaru, again, to be favored in this position. Yeah, because Rook D5 was such a superb move there by Hikaru. And Magnus, he's only down one pawn and he's trading off queenside pawns. If he can trade off the remaining queenside pawns, he has a draw. But Hikaru, he's too smart to do that. He brings his king wow. in and that should be that when his king and rook pressure the C2 pawn. Yeah, although Magnus still making it tricky. This is, this was awkward. This is awkward. I, I, okay, can you just take G2? No, because C4 check would have won the rook. That's right. Wow, what a weird turnaround there. Here comes Magnus with a C pawn. And the clock is even, which means that mistakes might happen. But the B-pawn, they're both queening, but you win the house for, for Black here. And that means that Hikaru has the upper hand, and I think we'll see our first two-point margin. Yeah, Hikaru nods. That was Hikaru Nakamura number three. That's the confident nod, followed by the duck lips. Clip it and ship it, everybody. <laughs> the first Hikaru Nakamura facial expression we can easily catalog. Like this? He likes it. He likes it. Oh, Danny, I miss commentating with you, so I'm glad uh, we got the I... Hikaru facial reader uh, with us today. But Hikaru is a beast. I think no matter what his face tells us, his play tells us that he is just 
desperate to win this event. Not because he's not the better player, but just because he really wants this title. Uh oh. Yep. Oh, and something happened uh -oh. there. There was we a blunder. Knight. Was Knight of Four check possible for Magnus? I think first. No, because before, we... before he brought the queen. Okay. In. Ah, Knight of Four, and then Queen in, and you win. You win the knight with check. Okay. Magnus. I... Magnus misplays that. You can't miss opportunities like that against Hikaru. As we said, he's the king when it comes to this format, and you don't get many chances to swing at him. So Magnus missed an opportunity there. We're, of course, lucky because we have the Eval bar. I mean, again, no no shame in, in saying that. That's the truth. But, uh, but yeah, if this one ends in a draw, Hikaru maintains his two-game lead. And it's very even, but Hikaru is up a few seconds. So uh, black is more active pieces, but Hikaru has more time with white. And this bishop now is terrible. It's locked in here. That might have been a bad decision, but the knight also is stuck. Both pieces can't move. Yeah. What is going on with this position you've got? Okay, I think Hikaru just settles on the... Oh, okay, yeah, that's literally a draw for as well. Um, That was funny. It was mutual <laughs> trappage. This mutual goes, trappage. It takes me back to Hikaru on ICC yeah. beating the bots. He would get positions just like <laughs> this, close it down, and then flag the bots. But here, Magnus was repeating enough times. And we see some... A little smile there, and a draw is yep. a fair result, but a good one for Hikaru keeps his lead. Yep. It's funny, because I think a lot of people just don't appreciate some of these skills Hikaru has. At, were, were These aren't accidental. These were, these were trained. We always joke Hikaru was raised on ICC, right? And he was a human who was beating bots when bots were first entering the online chess servers. And and he he, he figured out strategies to beat computers, which is, is really mind-blowing when you think about it. And um, that's one of the reasons he is so resourceful, so pesky and, and tricky on, on, on the online formats. And this position, I have to say, at first glance, it looks really good for white. Uh, the black king feels less safe than the white king. And the bishop is out, but the king slid to the corner, and now the black king is being hunted. Yeah. Magnus wants a victory. He needs to turn it around, bring it back within a game. Looks like he's on pace. Hikaru gives the head shake. Not over yet, but Magnus should get this one. Black King is wide open. You just got to figure out a way to break through if you're Magnus. Yeah, Queen D5, Queen D7 looks like a good way to do just that. And, oh, can you take it? He does and bring the Queen in. Yeah. I think White can bring the Queen to F7 and then push this pawn. Yeah. Hikaru trying to make things... Oh, you got Queen G1, C1, Queen. Outside chance of perpetual. Oh, the Queen! The line of... Oh, the queen oh, of F7. No! <laughs> Take it! Oh. Oh, I take the second time. <laughs> he sees it the second time. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh gosh, he, you know he he waves his hand. Oh, like, hey. <laughs> what was I doing? By the way, Hikaru streaming. Of course, you saw that delayed reaction. That was pretty funny. <laughs> he goes, oh, did, didn't see the queen. <laughs> and it's a one point match once again, Danny and yep. Hikaru going to again one of these quiet positions. So these two have been engaging. In combat in the end game. Yeah, Botez Gambit declined. I love that. <laughs> Botez Gambit <laughs> declined. The rare, the very rarely cited Botez Gambit declined there. Um, but okay, if Magnus wins this one, Robert, then we will be level with 30 minutes like a regular match, right? Remember, we had 45 minutes to start this this final. Uh, so we get extra chess between these two guys, which is great. But if Magnus wins, it basically is a wash. And we're back to 30 minutes with a tied match. What is happening? The Eva bar is doing push-ups over there, going up and down, and it seems like there's an incredible amount of tension. What is? Yeah. How does this survive for Hikaru? The king's getting checked, but there's there's no rookie three. I'm like, looks like piece. Okay, rookie three comes. Uh, he takes the rook, and it's Hikaru him. who's on the prowl. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the H pawn is running. Harry for the win. And by the way. A flex on the clock in this game by Hikaru. Look at that. That is a massive time advantage for Bullet. And Bishop E4 was a great move there by Hikaru. He knew to yeah. trade pieces off because their ensuing endgame would be so nice for him. He gets that win. And I think Magnus was blinded both by the sunlight and by Hikaru's great moves. Yeah. Magnus needs to get a little help with the curtains and uh, get a little help on the board right now with Hikaru Nakamura. Taking a two-game lead as we reach the 30-minute mark. And uh, he's on form. I guess he's answering the question that he isn't rusty, despite having watched Magnus for the last two hours. 
he's ready to now play Magnus. And did you make an unintentional Greg Shahadi ICC reference by talking about curtains? Mm. If you want to throw back to ICC usernames, we can do some trivia, which is fun. Shout out to Hawkeye. We miss we miss uh, we miss that guy. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, curtains. Uh, this looks pretty nice for black. There's a great light square bishop for one side, and a not yep. so great light square bishop for the other. And the black king is also more active. Yeah, black king finds the nice e5 square. Even though, yeah, he goes for the bishop ending. Not a position that white should be able to win, especially when you're the one down six seconds on the clock. So Hikaru continuing to do what he does. Bullet. A lot of time left, though. We got tons of time. Oh, he's trying to trick him. I was like, how could you give this yeah. access point? But there's bishop a2 check, and bishop then the bishop a6 would have been lost. Skewer. These guys are full of tricks. Silly rabbits. Tricks are for kids, although not in bullet chess. Tricks this are for everyone in bullet. <laughs> This bishop is on the best possible square. It's keeping the king out of both directions. But that was smart by Hikaru. He trades some pawns. The 50 move rule starts once again. And unless Magnus can take both these pawns, he is going to lose this game on the clock. Yeah. Hikaru flexing the time. The time. What you got to do. Yeah, I wonder how good these guys are in bullet compared to my accuracy score in classical chess. If I had to guess, they're better at bullet than I am at classical chess. Just saying. <laughs> like, this is insane. And look at Magnus. So what Hikaru's going to do is put his bishop on the, I think, on g6 at some point. And he's, yeah, he's going to take the yeah. bishop. And then Magnus yeah, is going to keep Yeah, he did corner. it. And the pre-move for the win. Just as long mm -hmm. as you don't accidentally stalemate or repeat a position three times. Magnus shakes his head, knows that Hikaru got the better of the, the, the meta bullet game there. And that's the third time. That Hikaru has done that. He beat Alireza Frugia twice in that same exact endgame with Bishop and wrong corner for the Rook Pawn. And now Hikaru has built his lead up. And in addition to his yep. three-point lead, he's got a really nice position in this game with the uncompromised pawn structure on the king side for white and black's king side in shambles. Yeah, and now you see the difference in body language. Hikaru with the head bob, feeling that ABBA. Dancing queen. Only seven. Okay, that, that's what he's listening to, by the way. I'm sure. Um, Hikaru just on the prowl right now, dude. Look at this. Yeah, White's up a piece. Up a piece. Up a piece. About to go up four games in the match. Up four seconds on the clock. Magnus no longer bobbing his head to T Swift. Someone needs to change the momentum for Mr. Carlson. The only good news that I can think of for Magnus is he lost six games in a row against Ali Reza. And he still won the match. Hikaru is next level, right? That is the final boss. But he has lost a series of games, then was able to go on a winning streak of his own. So that at least should give him some confidence in the back of his mind. Yeah, agreed. And that's the point we were making at the start of the match, is that because Magnus was down against Ali Reza and came back, that has to pay dividends here, at least from a psychological perspective. If, if, you're, if you didn't see that match, Magnus was down three games, Robert, with five minutes to go. Like... Yes, he was winning the game to make it two, but that was that was impressive. And he ended up really turning around. So Magnus is not going to go quietly into the night here. No, of course not. He always is a fighter. And now we're getting to an endgame. And Hikaru's actually been outplaying Magnus in many of these endgames. He's aided by the clock. He has a slight lead in this game as well. But look at the piece placement. He goes for C5. Yep. And Hikaru is just feeling it. He's really flexing it right now. <laughs> Enjoying the tune. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that is an Ava, because that doesn't look like a dancing queen beat. <laughs> no, it looks uh hmm, I wonder what he's look, listening to. I was gonna just throw out a random uh, musician, but I, I will ask him when it's done. He's probably not listening to anything. All right. Just the, the beat of his moves. Yeah, again, oh, the gosh, creepy thing would be that he's not listening to any music. Oh my god, and Magnus Blunders a piece. Hikaru maybe gonna take another one. And, you know, we, we asked a question, would Hikaru be rusty? Because Magnus is the one who played two matches, Robert. But the other flip side was, will Magnus's momentum turn into exhaustion? And if this one gets away from him, I think I think at this point it just might be that uh kind of ran out of steam here against the final boss, as you said. Just unreal play thus far from Hikaru. He's fast. Uh, he's playing very accurately. And he's getting to the end games where he can play for two results, as we say in classical chess. He knows that if Magnus plays super quickly, he might hold a draw, but otherwise Hikaru can use the clock as the main weapon. According to one of our mods, Magnus, Hikaru was listening to some Bollywood hits. 
By the way, if you haven't seen RRR, fantastic film. Sorry, I, back to the chest. Yeah, don't apologize. I just watched it the other night. You know, everyone wants to be beam out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was anyway. Okay, we we can't turn this into a movie podcast. All right, so staying on the chest here, Hikaru carries what was a lot of pressure, but Magnus still has an edge with the bishop pair. So, also. The biggest note is that he's not that down on the clock, right? It's very close. I think that's huge for Magnus to keep the speed up. Yeah, and look at this endgame. It is even material, two bishops against bishop-knight pair. And Magnus should be better, but I'm not sure he trusts himself that he might even look at this position, one that in the back of his head he wants to win, but at the same time he's like, I don't want to lose on time. Yeah. You don't want to lose on time, but uh, you also don't want to lose on the board. At this point, I don't think Magnus is in danger of losing on the board. But can he create enough for a win? you got to start racking up some dubs here, down by five. Ah. And the pawns trading off is really good news for the knight, right? The knight is a slow-moving piece. The bishops, they look across the board in a better way. E5 is dropping, but then A3 would be captured. So uh, yeah. Magnus desperately clinging on to both of his pawns. Yeah, he's trying to create some sort of swindle. He does manage to steal one, but Hikaru... Wait, okay... There's some chances to win here, and time is even enough that Magnus could convert this. No, nope. I think what Magnus could have done was take this pawn. He could have like bishop e6 and took it. I'm worried ah. about him getting flagged, and he takes the pawn right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. A draw. Apparently, Hikaru has crossed lines that very few should venture into. He's listening to Nickelback. Whoa, look at this photograph, Danny. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Although, I will say, why does Nickelback get so much hate? What is the deal with Nickelback getting all the hate? I don't know. But all, I, the answer that we all want is, like, what was on Joey's head? Can, can we just can yeah. we get that? <laughs> what, the, what the hell was on Joey's head? <laughs> this is where oh. I grew up, you know? <laughs> the, I grew up uh, watching these two in some ways online. Not really. I'm, I'm an old man. But uh, that's how I. there up. are some people growing up watching these guys. It's true. And uh, as we get back to the chest, white is up a pawn. So Magnus needs to show that Magnus technique. And he brings his king all the way up. But he's dropping pawns. And I'm worried about him losing another game. Yeah, the knight is just so pesky there. The king is in a, in a, in a danger zone for sure. There are mating net possibilities. Although, look at the aggression. I like this f5. If we're trading into the rook ending. Uh, well, Carlos mm -hmm. fine. Sorry, yeah. he does well. <laughs> Hikaru's I mean, actually doing fine. <laughs> I mean, Magus needs to be reminded of who he really is, you know? He's oh, going to the end game. Yeah, he, needs, he needs to be reminded of who he really is. Um, can you take on D7? By the way, D7? I think Hikaru can just take on D7 and he doesn't realize it. Yeah. Take on D7 and King D8 and it's over. Mm -hmm. Now he stops to calculate. I think he's not... Wait, what happened? Yeah. No, no, he realized that he was winning. Because he's on a delay because he's streaming. So he's like, I could have just captured his rook and won the end game. Oh, it was perpetual. Okay, I didn't realize that they that it was a draw. Yeah, but he just realized he was winning if he had traded rooks. Oh, this looks really bad for Hikaru, though. Like, I know Hikaru sometimes plays some dodgy stuff, but handing your opponent the light squares in front of your king feels like a bad idea, usually. Hikaru is... <laughs> he, uh, he couldn't make it as a wise man. Maybe he'll make it as a poor man stealing. Although right now Magnus is going to steal one. Danny, I, I want to. That game, that game reminds us of who Magnus Carlson is. <laughs> this is how you remind us, Magnus, of who you really are. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to keep going in this Nickelback direction. <laughs> I can, like, I can if you want. Um... <laughs> we, can, we can force it all day. This is. We should. I wonder if one day we'll confess how many times you and I have played the game where we were sneaking words on the show. Um, yeah. Because our producers don't want to know that. But every once in a while, talent has to, uh, you know, we won't go there. But every once in a <laughs> while, we have fun. I mean, Danny, come on. Let's be real. Someday, somehow, I'm going to make it all right, but not right yep. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well, Magnus hey, needs to make it all right right now because he's down a lot in the match. But he's better in this position because he's going right after Hikaru's king. Yeah, he is. Although, he's still down five games. Oh. Although, I feel like he just won. Didn't that make it four? Maybe I missed something. 
Um, um, well, I think we missed yeah. a lot because we were seeing. We were, by. you know, stuck in in uh, Nickelback references, which is, uh, you know, never go full Nickelback, as they say. And um, I agree with that chat that Hikaru is so good. He's been playing amazing chess. But in this game, look at Hikaru's king. It's wide open, and Magnus isn't even down any material for this attack. Yeah, Magnus is rolling here, and it is a four game. It is a four game. I'm glad that even when I lose my focus, full nickel back, I was I was uh, on top of the score there. Magnus should bring this to three games unless something crazy happens. Although I'm not going to doubt those knights. This is this is this is uh okay. He's doing a good job cleaning up the tactics. No more forks. Push him, baby. And uh, Magnus brings us to he's three slow. games here. No, no, Magnus is slow right now. He's down to six seconds. Really? He oh, should yeah. get this done. But he's playing very slowly. Yeah, Hikaru is pre-moving the bleep out of this. Okay, but that was good. Three seconds. That was, that was okay. really nice by Magnus there. Uh, to push his F-pawn, get his king involved, and not fall yep. for a fork. So Magnus, it's back to three yep. points. He's feeling better. You can see it on his face. But Hikaru still has a healthy lead in the match. 18 minutes to go. Remember, we had 45 minutes to start, which ultimately is huge for Magnus because at this point, if it was 30 minutes probably would be down and out right so this is um this is exactly what we what we uh, wanted to see the most chess possible between these two guys in a final and uh magnus is uh turning the momentum around yeah i mean magnus is asking could you say goodbye to yesterday because if today was your last day you gotta win this bullet <laughs> <It's just stopped>. <laughs> <laughs> you you are shameless you're shameless <laughs> Oh, uh, well, back to the uh, to the bullet here. It looks like Magnus with the black pieces. He's much better because his king is safer, and he's going after Hikaru's pawns. Yeah, and if a2 falls, this is one of those positions that it's, it's, it's hard to lose his black. That's the other problem, is that Magnus is up on the clock, and there aren't any tricks, right? Sometimes you're losing, but there, you know there's weirdness to come. There's knight forks. There's king safety. In this position, the uh, the game is a pretty easy one for black to play. Yeah, you're up a pawn and a clear extra one. He goes bishop c8. He wants the outermost pawn. Bring the king over to e8 and play bishop d8. I think that's... Oh, he gave up the a pawn for the d pawn, but that was a surprising decision. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know that that improves his winning chances. So right as I say that, maybe Hikaru is in a position to hold this. That would be unfortunate for Magnus for his momentum to come to a screeching halt. And by the way, Hikaru up enough on the clock that, that this could get dangerous. Yes, it really could. And now you see both players scrambling at the moment. And look at that defense from Hikaru. He plants his bishop yep. in front of the pawn. And now he's the one with the active king and a passer of his own. Yep. Whoa. Oh, What's my your... gosh. What is going on there? Queen ending invited. Seven seconds for Magnus, ten for Hikaru. And Magnus wants to trade queens, but not oh, at you... that point. No, he didn't want to trade queens right there. <sighs> oh, wait, but White was winning if you took because some weird opposition. Yeah, no, the king, the white king was too close. If you took on close. d6 and king c8, white was winning. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Though That's two endgames Hikaru has missed the chance to trade into a winning king and pawn ending. And again, we don't have time. You know, this is not the most instructive chess show you're ever going to watch on Twitch, everyone, uh, because this bullet. But yeah, white was winning due to irregular flanking opposition there and uh, crazy stuff. Yeah, that was pretty wild, and it's hard to trade like that because your king is so far away, you think, I might lose the game, and that is definitely not something that Hikaru wants. And you know what he's doing? He is waiting. He's yeah. going to go down to one second left and then make bishop h6. It will be a three-time repetition. The game will be a draw, but at least he burns 30 more seconds off the match clock. Yeah, and he's pausing to make sure he does that um, and playing the meta game, taking a sip of that giant mug of water, there's not really much to do here. Looking at this analysis, every time I do it makes me laugh. Every time I do it makes me. I can't do it anymore, Diddy. I'm trying to wean off the Nickelback references because otherwise I'm going to burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was slow on the update there. <laughs> Reading chat. And that laugh was probably a little unnecessary. I'm so glad it's the weekend. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, oh. the draw, the draw comes to Ikaru Nakamura. He has a ten to seven lead. We'll uh, we'll switch that scoreboard here in just a second. But yeah, that draw burns some time off the clock. 
and um, and Hikaru Nakamura maintaining his lead. Yeah, he he's really playing a great match, but Magnus is making it more and more competitive, not just by the scoreboard, but just the way Magnus has played in many of these games. But I like what Hikaru is doing here. Look at how even this position is, and it's a complete draw, and that allows Hikaru to burn even more time off the clock because he's, he's not going to lose this game. And Magnus... You know, if he doesn't play quickly, at some point, Hikaru may, may say, I'm not making a draw anymore. I'm going to try to flag you. Yeah, but I'm just furious right now with our mods who did a poll for the best Nickelback song. Where's Photograph? Oh, Photograph's at the top. In green, because I missed it. Yeah, Photograph. There you go. Photograph is is probably their best song. <laughs> yeah, of um, course it is. Yeah. Another and, another King Upon ending. Hikaru going to get as much time off the clock as he can. Although I will say this. At this point, the meta of getting time off the clock isn't that relevant yet, right? This is not the type of lead, Robert, that is devastating. It's a three-game lead. Remember, if it even gets within one game, we have overtime chess because the new rules are that you have to win bullet matches by two. So I'm just pointing out that regardless of the fact that we're losing time here, I, I don't think that he's in a position to really protect the lead like that yet. Yeah, it takes me back to Hikaru versus Wesley So and those speeches championships where they <laughs> did this forever, it felt like, because there was increment, yeah. which made it worse because you could make a little pawn move at some point and then start <laughs> over again. Uh, in pure bullet with zero seconds added per move, yeah, someone's going to uh, flag. They can't just wait forever. So the 50-move rule happened, and now we see in this game Magnus, he's going for it. He is on the offensive on the king side, but has yeah. he overextended? A nice strike by Hikaru to play F5. That's actually a really thematic, instructive point. I know we said we don't get a lot of analysis and bullet everybody, but that was a really great thing because White has also opened his king with this pawn storm, and that's what Black points out with this F5 move. So Hikaru makes it spicy, and both kings are in danger. And what's going on here? The queen went up to C4. Black blocked it. Is there trouble on this E6 square if you can trick? Oh, he just dropped the pawn on E6. Wait, didn't, didn't Magnus have... There was a knight on e6. He could have taken this pawn on d6. So Magnus with the oversight, and now Hikaru, I mean, he looks like he's getting a knight f3 in there. Yeah. Wow. Hikaru turned that around. Consider it done, as far as Nickelback, Nickelback references in an interview. Consider it done. Maybe we'll do whoa, that thing where all whoa, of us whoa. are in the inside joke. Oh, whoa. King of two. Knight takes e2. And but rookie hand is hanging. Yeah, that... Look at oh the time. Gosh. Hikaru was kind of burning some of the clock, and then he made that move, and it was a rough decision. And Magnus went bishop g5, allowing this. He had better options, but he just wants to make a draw. He does not want to lose on time. He just yeah. wants to grab these last pawns. Yeah, he's only got six seconds. If Hikaru keeps a pawn, he has winning chances, but Magnus will have none of it. That one got away from Hikaru. And again, I know we've seen Hikaru doing more of the meta bullet things here, milking the clock, protecting a lead. But with 11 minutes... Plus to go here. You know, we already saw Magnus overcome a three-game deficit in five minutes versus Ali Reza Perugia. So this is this is close. I'm totally with you. I think that Hikaru, he's trying to uh, use that strategy to his advantage. But in some of these games, it's his disadvantage. You'd rather win a game in 20 seconds than draw a game in a minute. There's still enough time for Magnus to make this comeback. And look at this position. It's very sharp. Where White has an extra pawn, or did have an extra pawn over there on the queen side. Now Black is in the driver's seat. D5, is that's a weakness. And, whoa, that was a quick spot by Magnus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's going to have a couple extra pawns here. Plus the bishop versus knight dynamic should be better for black. Only thing you have to watch out for usually is the time against Hikaru, but Magnus also up five seconds on the clock here. So a good turnaround for Carlson. Uh-oh, yeah. but that open king, Hikaru, is not going to make this easy. Spying some tactic. And B3 just fell, one, and now it looks like we're into an end game that, unfortunately for Magnus, should be a draw. But now I'm looking at the clock. Magnus is the one up a yep. few seconds. He's also up a yep. pawn. He should try to win this game. He should. And now he's got a pass to E-pawn. This is a lot harder to hold than it looks for White. If Magnus can, uh, can keep his cool on the clock. He is still up three seconds. That's huge. Yeah, this is not easy. King could this go is, up to F5. Or also E3 yeah, this now. this is objectively... Now it's objectively losing for White. Magnus in position to bring this back to two games. Oh, but Hikaru tricked Wait. him. Hikaru tricked him. When the rook is in front, the king could come back to the second rank. But if the 
the Rook wasn't back there, there was going to be an E1 check. And now Hikaru's going up on time. Oh, my goodness. And he's the one who could win on the board. I mean, okay, it's going to be a draw, but I wonder if he shouldn't have traded Rooks there. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. I mean, what a save. That was incredible. He understood that if his rook was behind the pawn, which you normally want, he couldn't get his king back. So he drops the rook to the first rank, brings it in front of the pawn, and his king was able to scamper back just in the nickel back of time. So that was a nice save there by Hikaru Nakamura. You know? And <laughs> and now we have another game that's you know, mainline stuff. Uh, and yeah. We're going to do the game chat where all of us are on this inside joke. And Robert and I are going to try to squeeze Nickelback references into the interview. And it'll be awesome. It's going to be fun. Um, I don't know who we're going to be interviewing. we still got a long ways to go. I will say that, I, again, I know it's a three-game lead. But Hikaru's had his chances, Robert, objectively, I think, to make the lead bigger. We, we know he missed those spots in a couple of endgames, right? Where he didn't convert to the king upon ending. So, will it come back to haunt him? Right now, Magnus, again, threatening to make it a two-game lead. Yeah, he should be winning this. I don't see how you stop this pawn unless you give up your rook in a7 right now. Who cares about this bishop? Yeah. You are getting this queen. Yeah. Magnus, he wins a quick game there. It's only a two-point yeah. spread. That's huge. That's huge. Exactly. No, this is, uh, again, I think that I, it's, it's too early to provide criticism overall in any sort of match strategy. But I do think Hikaru protected his lead a little bit with a couple of those draws. And Magnus saved. Magnus held on and now might have a little bit of momentum as we head into the final minutes. And now we have another complicated opening where uh, black is attacking on the queen side and also white's not attacking anywhere because the rook on yep. c8 keeps white's pieces honest. Yeah, queen e2 is a nice little trick. He goes and steals that Whoa. pawn. Whoa, but here comes Carlson on the second rank. Is there... Takes an F4. So he missed something better. I don't know what it was, but it, it cl clearly the eval bar, instead of being all the way down for black, it went back towards the middle. And somehow Hikaru is escaping? How? Yeah. I don't know how Hikaru escaped that. That And now now it's turning around the other way. 93. He blundered the endgame. Hikaru's yep. got an extra pawn on the outside. No, this is just great for a card. In fact, it's winning. I think if I'm Magnus, I might just resign. Wow. Oh, and as soon as I say that, Hikaru blunders the pawn. Hikaru blunders right back. What's the time? 28 to 18 seconds, so Hikaru should... Oh, F6 check! He pre-moved it. Hikaru played King E5, and Magnus had pre-moved F6. The mm -hmm. house falls with the E6 pawn, and what a huge win for Hikaru that is to keep Magnus's momentum back. And you could just see the pain in Magnus's face as they get into another end game. No queens on the board in this one. Uh, it seems to be the match strategy for these players. Let's go down to the end game. White has the bishop pair, but we'll see if Magnus is still reeling from that loss. He needed th to hold that game, but he still does have enough time to get a couple wins here. What is this position? Danny, this just looks really good for Magnus. To my eyes, and the eval bar is... Absolutely unfazed. Yeah. It looks great for White, but it's also a closed position that could go for a while here, the T-file being the only open one. So it's... I'm, I'm starting to play the meta game, Robert. I'm looking at the time. Again, Magnus did overcome three games in five minutes for Perugia, but Nakamura is a different animal. And uh, you're starting to get up against it, where the closed positions are, are ones you just have to avoid, even if you're better. Uh now black is better, and he pushes his pawn, so maybe some trades will happen. Opposite colored bishops. There's a check on d5 here. Sorry, why is black better? Is it because the b pawn is just that strong? You're asking me, you know? <laughs> Eval bar needs a raise. Now, that is a pawn I could get behind right there. <laughs> um, okay, Magnus finds a way to get the counterplay. Unfortunately, though, it, it, this is a draw that's going to take another 30 seconds off the total game clock for sure. Hikaru's yeah. going to milk this all the way to the end, and we're going to be under five minutes. And if you're Hikaru, I don't think you push the B pawn. You might just lose that end game as black will be up a piece, but white will have these pass pawns that will roll up the board. So Magnus needs to go like King G5, back to F5, back and forth over there, and Hikaru might... Yeah, he goes in. He goes in for the win. He, go he goes for it. 
But the car's down, down in time. He's losing. Oh, F4. And here oh, Magnus pushed just, it too Magnus, far. Magnus just needs to move. It doesn't matter if you blunder. What a huge go. momentum shift here. F6 and E7. Oh, my gosh. What a momentum shift. Magnus Carlsen wins to bring this within two games, and we have four minutes and 45 seconds left. I spoke too soon. I thought I thought it was a dead obstacle bishop ending. Hikaru should have taken the draw. Mm -hmm. And then Hikaru brought his king in. He could have repeated at any moment. And you saw the grimace on his face. That was one of those, like, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do it? And speaking of why is he doing things, what is this opening for white? It looks really bad. Yeah. This is where Hikaru is... You, you got to take a breath and not go into the, the uh, kind of dubious opening lane that, again, sometimes he can revert to, which works against 99.999% of people in Bullet. But Magnus is going to get positions like this and be better if Hikaru plays those weird openings. Just light square domination. You can't kick that... Yeah. Whoa, a queen sack on G4. Wow. Wow. He, he, he made that, that decision actually so quickly. Looks pretty good. Yeah. That that was that was ridiculous. That might be one of the most ridiculous moments of the match. He's losing the game though. Yeah, he, he's losing the game now. It's falling apart, and that king is in a lot of danger. What a move there, G five by the way, forcing the rook to the awkward square. And this is going to be a one game match with three minutes to go. Everybody, buckle up. You're looking at a couple of rock stars where the chess comes easy and the blunders are cheap. Danny, I thought you were saving me from all the Nickelback references, and then there you go. <laughs> Whoa, what? Wait, wait. Hikaru just yeah, blundered, oh. and, and it seems like Magus could have taken more advantage of it, but didn't. But still, he has the better position and the safer king, a knight into d5. The bishop slicing across the board, a long-range piece against the black king. Yeah, the momentum again. We've seen it happen. Magnus overcame momentum against Perugia. Very similar to this. Down three games with about five minutes left. Now he's only down by one, and uh, you got to win by two. Thanks yes. for everything you just said, Captain Obvious. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. I, I do appreciate <laughs> it, but you know what I would do if I'm Hikaru here? I'm looking at the overall match clock, but it's only a one-point spread. Look to flag Magnus. Bishops are more difficult to move than rooks in time yep. scrambles. Magnus doing the right thing, yep. pushing his pawn all over the board. It's a bishop and three pawns for a rook. And yet here I am saying, look at the clock and look at Hikaru's chances. Yeah. Yeah, objectively, the chess is good for white here. But the rook is so much easier to play in these spots. The bishop is stuck. You can't pre-move. Like, look at this. The rook can already pre-move in a way that white cannot. And that's such a practical advantage in these games. Uh, he's going. Okay. He's going for the. H he goes for it, but he had to take time on it. Yeah, he's moving very slowly, and Hikaru playing. Oh, a repetition! I don't think that's good for Hikaru. I felt like he could have played on. Yeah, yeah, I think he should have played King E five there instead of the last Rook A five, and allowed the game to go on. Now, now you're down to a game though that it could be it, right? If Hikaru wins this game, that's it. Magnus yes. got to win to send us into overtime, or at least not lose. What is this opening? It looks very adventurous, and White's king is safely castled. Black's king remains in the center, but Black does have the pair of bishops. So I would say initial advantage White, but if the checkmate attack doesn't happen quickly, then Black suddenly might be right back in this. Agreed. F6. It's a spicy move. And You want that knight on d5, but he wants more than just a trade. Wow, rook enters the center, but here comes bishop e3. But rook d3. Oh, he walked into it. Ah, oh, he oh, check. I, I missed the check. Oh, he had a check. I missed the check. <laughs> oh. Everybody oh, missed the check. I mean, we're in scary territory. This queen just wrapped around a b5, but it's doing nothing over there. Yeah. In fact, the e4 pawn is about to drop, and the f6 pawn no is one, also weak in the end game. No one knows what's going on here, least of all the eval bar. It's a five-second time advantage, though, for Hikaru, which is huge if things stay the same. Magnus has got to make something happen or he's going to get flagged. Yes, it, though, if Magnus is going to lose, he better keep an eye on the match clock and then resign immediately because there's still time yep. left and he would have a chance to win that game. But, uh-oh, it's getting bad for him. It looks like the yep. eval bar is saying white is better. That's a brilliant point. If Magnus is going to lose, he needs to resign, like, like now. Yes, but it's unclear. You know, in this position, it looks like Black is the one who's doing well. He's stealing the pawns, but his clock is down uh, under. What's going oh, on? I'm in seconds. He's grabbing all the pawns. He's got to go. He has to rush this like he's never rushed before. 
Yep, 10 seconds. Here comes the eight. Oh, 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 Push him. Oh, 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 it's a tied it. match. It's a tied match. And they get oh, one more game. My I think, God. I think there were seconds on the clock. So this game doesn't start the six move um, mini match that they would have to see who can win by two. Uh, we'll get word from our producers. But he went rook before. I'm not sure if he was going for a cheeky, you know, my opponent might pre move or he mouse slipped. But either way, Magnus takes the game and we are knotted up at 13 and a half. OMGzer snaps. There's a reason those emotes exist for subscribers. Emotes like this, because we freak out when bullet chess happens. And this is uh this is crazy. And Hikaru again just felt like he he snatched a defeat, snatched a, a draw there from the from the jaws of victory. He he and Magnus has gotta get credit for keeping in those games. By the way, Magnus now up on the clock here. <laughs> this is a renewed sense of faith in his ability to win this match. And while we are seeing some yep. trades, the H4 pawn is loose. That bishop on G7 hitting the E5 pawn. But I think Magnus, with the lead on the clock, and I would take his position, even though that rook just landed in the enemy camp. Completely agreed. You gotta like White's position here. This is, this is regulation. We have had it confirmed, we believe, by production and game ops, who are behind the scenes, making sure... Well... What was rookie four? He's going for a rook lift. I guess there was a knight of six check and opening up the e-file. Uh -huh. There's something here. Apparently there is. He goes queen d3. He wants rook d8 with a mating attack. The queen blocks and she says. Yeah, yeah. There was queen takes f3 there for black, by the way, everyone. That's why he retreated to d3. Hikaru trying to get the queens off the board. Who's better here with the a pawn? The e -pawn? I have no idea what's going on. Will Magnus just settle on a draw? No. I think he does. And you see Magnus, he's mad at himself because he was up about seven seconds. The match remains tied. Now we are into overtime. And so this it changes things. It's we still win by two, and they get six games. So after the sixth game, if there's someone in the lead, they win the match, even if it's just a one-point margin. Danny, this is what the people wanted. This is what the people wanted. It's what they signed up for. I am, uh, I am just sitting here like a little kid. Bundled up on Christmas, opening presents, knows that all of them are going to be great. Doesn't matter. I don't even know what's going on or any other holiday. I'm excited. Hey, you like to open presents. I think Magnus wants to open the C file. This rook would have caused some problems, but he doesn't do that. Instead, he gives himself the F4 square and goes to the B file. And watch out. The A2 pawn is hey Rook B2. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's nasty. If you take it, we're going to have a baby girl, Brittany, on B1. You can't give Black... Oh, my God. It's all falling apart here. Hikaru will be down in the match, by the way, for the first time today if he loses. Hikaru has not trailed in this match. Wait, wh where did Max's queen just go? He didn't retreat it. He could have brought it back to F7, but he goes for this, and maybe we spoke too soon. What just happened? Oh, my gosh. This F6 pawn is How hanging. Did... How did that happen? And he pre-moved King H8, and he's just losing the game. Wow. Well, I gave a commentator's curse earlier, and it backfired on Hikaru Nakamura. I guess I just cursed Magnus there because I am shocked that Hikaru Nakamura has won that game. I just can't believe Magnus didn't drop his queen back when he was stealing all the pawns in the position. Maybe he just... Didn't realize there was, there was a bishop on b3 before that. He didn't realize he could go back, but that's a thing of the past. And right now, Magnus with the white pieces has a nice position, but he's down five seconds. So he needs to go after this d6 pawn. He needs to hammer away at Hikaru's setup. Did he just... Oh, he got so fortunate oh my that God, the rook on a8 was loose. So so lucky. He blundered the skewer, but it didn't matter. Hikaru worse in this position, but as you said, up a few seconds on the clock. But again, it's win or go home. Literally, if anyone earns a two-point margin, everybody, that's it. Chip it. We're done. And what is happening here? The rook b3 the, steals a pawn, but this open c file. Watch out for the black king. Oh, they're making mistakes. Both of them, of course. It's bullet. It happens. Yeah. Oh, there's apparently a winning. Queen g7. Nerds. Free knight. Free knight. Queen 7 It was just hanging. Oh, he's still hanging. <laughs> he sees it the third time. <laughs> oh. oh, my Oh, goodness. my gosh. Agreed. These games never disappoint. Oh my gosh. Hikaru, on a little bit of a delay, that's the moment where his knight was hanging. And now Bishop is hanging. It's not over, though. Oh, he, he just dropped a second piece. So he first yeah, dropped now, a knight, then is. a bishop. 
and his queen's not trapped, but look at Magnus. Just get those queens off the board, and then, oh, he didn't even have to. Hikaru resigned. Yeah. Hikaru throws in the towel. We're back to tied. All netted up. 15 games apiece. Moving on to our third game in overtime, everybody. I haven't seen an overtime this good since UConn-Syracuse back in that Big East tournament. This is really some epic stuff. I mean, they must both be super nervous at this stage. And look at Magnus adopting this French-like structure without a light score bishop. Yeah, good for Black here. Magnus increasing his space advantage on the queen side. High-level chess and bullet. Look at this move, King d7, by the way. Oh, connecting the rooks. A great end game. This is what they say, right? I hate on the French in the opening, but when you get to the end game, it's almost always better for black because the base yep. pawn, F7, very hard to get to, and look at white's pawns. They're sticking out a bit. Yep. Yep. Opposite position you want to be in in a French. Also, no edge on the clock this time for Hikaru. He is staring down what could be his first deficit in the match. And the last time you said it, you jinxed Magnus. This time you almost did as well, apparently. But look at that. These knights... They're going right after this rook, and if rook c2? What is happening here? I have no idea. He's going to take c1 and be down the exchange, but he's got some compensation. Oh, no, oh, look, Knight. What a trick. Knight, he wants to trade them all. He wants to trade all the rooks. 93 is going to take everything off the board. Hikaru doesn't want it. And Hikaru's in huge trouble. Magnus just has to take. Why did he spend like five seconds on that turn? He is wasting time. Yeah, now he's losing the C-pawn, and he doesn't even win the material back. This is oh. going the wrong direction for Hikar uh, for Magnus. Okay, but he did go up Hikar a piece here. And wow. he's keeping... Knight of five, go give a check. Just give a check somewhere. What's the time? Oh, but you got ten to seven seconds here. And it's now this under is eight. super dangerous for Magnus. Yeah, he's pre-moving. He's trying his best. Oh, he's blown to the A5 pawn, and now Hikar is taking it, and he's taking the G6 pawn. So if the rooks come off, Hikar oh my cannot God, and White's even better now. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. And Magnus lost the time. Wow. He screams at the screen. Unbelievable. I don't know what he's yelling about, but that is not what you wanted. Hikaru maintains a one-game lead, or regains a one-game lead, and Magnus has never led in this match. And I think part of it is your fault. The commentator's curse strikes again. I'll, I'll shut up. I mean, I'm... <laughs> no, you do the talking. Hey, we're not rooting for every anybody time here. It, every time Magnus gets close to taking his first lead again, you're just joining, Hikaru has led this match wire to wire. Magnus completed at one point, what was it, a four? Was it five games at one point? Uh, it ballooned up to uh, quite a substantial yeah. uh, difference. You know, but I guess they're chatting. Maybe Hikaru, because his matches haven't been close, he doesn't know that overtime is still a uh, win by two. Ah, they're checking to see what game they are. So that is very smart. Uh, that is yeah, really yeah. smart by both of them. They're seeing how many games do we have left yeah. before it becomes sudden death. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they're chatting with the team. Uh, staff confirmed it was five games of a lead for Hikaru Nakamura at one point. In fact, at a couple different points, Hikaru had a five-game lead. So we are in overtime chess here. Both players confirming where the match sits. And it's a win-by-two scenario unless we get to six games, and then it's sudden death. Whoever wins is your bullet chess champion. Although, actually, if Magnus Carlsen wins, we get more chess. So for the content, many people rooting for Magnus. <laughs> for the uh, for the Hikaru fans, they don't want to see any more chess. And who do you think that little stall favored? Because Magnus lost the game. But both players must be nervous. So do you feel like any side gets the upper hand thanks to that mini break? I think with players like this who are just objectively so good, it probably doesn't really matter. Um, but I, you have to believe it always favors the person who lost the game to be able to take a breath. So maybe Magnus can kind of control his uh, his emotions for a moment. He is up, he is up uh, a little bit in terms of space here. Oh, and that d6 pawn is... The worst pawn on the board, if you can get around your dark square bishop. So yeah, a little bit of extra space for Magnus, but a lot of extra time for Hikaru. Five seconds at the moment. And whoa, the, what just happened to the king yeah, what side? what just I, happened there? I look away for a second, and it's like vacuumed off the board. Yeah, everything just exited. 
Hikaru probably okay with a draw, even though that doesn't win the match, because he's black, gives him another chance to win with white. Remember, it's win by two, unless we get to get to seven, to the seventh game. This is an incredibly played game thus far, Danny. I've been w- watching the eval bar. It hasn't moved. They've put all the best moves to this point, and black gives That's up a insane. piece, but gets a bunch of pawns. And it's going to be a draw by perpetual check. Maybe no, not, but... No, it, Ma- uh, H- this Hikaru should play for a win. Look at the clock. He should. He should, and he knows it, and he does it. Hikaru going in. Wait, there was a blunder. Queen B6. Yeah, this part is promoting. He allowed the queen oh, in. The part is promoting. You see it on Magnus' face. He knows. God. It's over. Oh, my God, and that... And that... It does it. ...is how Hikaru Nakamura defended his Bullet Chess Championship title. Oh my goodness, that was a clash of titans. And Hikaru speaking to his fans, his audience, on his stream. But Magnus, you know, he's as disappointed there with a second place finish. But Hikaru, he didn't trail a single time in the match. And Magnus almost made it happen, but almost is not good enough. A wire-to-wire victory for the reigning bullet chess champion. Magnus Carlsen will not get one of the only titles in chess that has evaded him at this point in his career. Hikaru Nakamura is still the bullet chess champion.